do 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 correction confirming I know what I'm doing because I'm not convinced I know what I'm doing so we gotta confirm before I start oh there I am fantastic okay I am 100% paranoid that I'm going to start this and it looks good on the computer and that somehow I don't know what I'm doing and that I'm not live and that I'm doing all of this and completely oblivious to the fact that I'm talking to myself and the dog and no one else. Now, I do believe that talking to my dog is absolutely a worthy you know, spending of my time. That is absolutely 100% on the to-do list of good ideas. However, the point of all of this is procrastination, actually. And so my procrastination started yesterday morning where I was like, ah, yay, I finished a dress yesterday and now I need to like do the video and edit the video and explain the dress and everything. And I'm just like, I am not in the mood. So I talked to a friend and I was like, I finished my dress for your daughter's bat mitzvah. And she's like, oh, that's so fun. Which part for the, you know, for the, the, the service or for the party? And I was like, oh crap, that's right. Costume change costume change. I mean, when you get offered a costume change opportunity, take it. And, and I was like, oh crap, I need to sew another dress. So I decided the, to, to, to just go live and sew a dress and try to give myself like a 24 hour, you know, challenge or something. And, you know, cause that's a thing, right? You know, for, for YouTubers and social media, you know, we're going to do this thing in 24 hours. Well, here's the thing. I'm actually married and I have two kids. I'm a stay at home mom and my husband is a pilot. So I'm a season, hardened seasoned pilot's wife. And sometimes he comes home at weird times. I was expecting him home at 1 a.m. He got home before I got home yesterday, which really interrupted what I was going to do last night, which was finish the dress. But we, but then everyone like rallied in the house and we got everything taken care of and we set me downstairs to finish the dress and I went live and that was and 30 seconds in I realized that I had cut out uh, the, the wrong thing okay so I cut out two front pieces for the lining this is not going to be able to be aligning because the armpits are wrong, the, the, the neckline is wrong. Nope. So this is what I'm going to do. And, and it was so late and I was just, I did, um, how much time did I sit? I was live for five hours and 10 minutes before my computer died. And then I took the dress with me and I hemmed it um, in, 40 minutes and I see a pin on the ground. Give me a second. September 10th, 2022. Now I'm paranoid and looking at the ground going, are there any other pins? Cause that shouldn't be on the ground. No, but there's a lot of thread. Okay. So, so obviously this won't work. And then I found that out at like eight 30 last night. And at that point I had been up for God, I was up. Oh my God, there is another pin. No, 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 that's, that's not okay. Okay, so order of business today is going to be finishing this dress, staring at the ground and looking for pins, but I am going to definitely vacuum at the end of this. Holy moly, um, that's, that's the only way to take care of this, vacuum it. Uh, anyway, so I this is wrong. I can't, there's nothing, this is chiffon. You do not stitch with chiffon, but the good news is that I don't need to. I am going to take this. I'm going to lob it off right here, put on straps, and I'm going to have a slip. This is a slip. This is a 1920 slip. This is exactly what, what a, this is perfect. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm not going to worry about it, but I'm not going to worry about it today, nor am I going to do it today. So I'm going to gently fold it up and I'm going to do this very gently and call it good. What, however, am I going to do about the dress? Because, okay, it has to have a lining. Well, the good news is, is that 
I've got enough. This will finish out the remains of this. But that's okay because nothing went to waste because I like having a nice red silk. I can use that slip under this and everything is completely fine. Absolutely lovely. So fabulous. Um, needed another slip anyway. So this is the plan for today. I am going to take this. I'm going to take these two patterns. I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to walk over to the sewing machine. I'm going to French seam the sides. I am going to add the lace trim to the bottom of this, if necessary, if I wasn't able to use the selvage edge. I'm going to take the dress. I'm going to insert this. I'm going to sew the armpits. I'm going to sew the front neck and the neck. And then I'm going to flip it out the other way, trim everything before I flip it. And then I'm going to sew it again. And then I'm going to have French seams where all of this is bound together and looks fantastic. Or I'm going to look at it and do it the other way where I do top stitch, where I flip it around and do top stitching, but not French seaming, but it'll look good to anyway. I'll figure it out when I get there. Either one, totally a legitimate way to do this. Now the real question is, is this time travel approved? I would say 90%. The outside material has a weird stretch to it. It's not stretchy, but it is stretchy, but in weird ways. I don't think that this is time travel approved because of the stretch factor alone. Everything else, however, feels dead on. So 90% time travel approved. All right. I feel like there was something else I was supposed to say or include or something. Hi. Okay. Ooh, I should look at chat. Ha! Huh, thank you. I'm so glad that it looks. Okay, good, 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 good. Looks good and sounds good. Fantastic. Thank you very much for that confirmation because I am seriously paranoid about that. Okay. Um... Because I've, I've, I've done too much video now where I've then edited and I'm like, that, that, that's not good. You can't put that in your video. That has to be cut. So I know how wonky things can get. And when I say to you, I, I, my selfie game and my video game and all of my understanding of this, this is the lowest level of art skill that I have out of everything that I do. And I have come to appreciate that anything regarding technology and film and cameras, that's art. That is totally art. And no one can convince me otherwise because this is a skilled level art craft that is mind-blowingly hard for me. <laughs> I, am, I have nothing but respect for anyone who can genuinely use a camera and create something as beautiful as I am seeing now. It is absolutely spectacular. So nothing but props for fo uh, photo and video art. Okay, let's finish this. Oh, but wait, let me show you what we're making just in case you weren't here yesterday. It is up, but it's five hours of real time sewing. I would suggest that it's great for something in the background, but that it is not riveting because unless you are riveted by me, but which could happen, I, I, I'm fairly entertaining apparently. Okay, here. Okay. Do, do, do. Okay, right here. We are making this blue dress, which is a nice sheath. You have a little bit of uh, indentation right here, which tells me that that's uh, where the little dart would go. I'm looking at the lines on the dress. I'm like, if there is going to be a point where I take anything in, it's going to be right here at the, uh, the hip area. I have finished this nice little thing all the way around. I'm a little worried that I may have gotten it a little off center. I'm not going to be able to figure it out until it is on me. If it is visibly um, crooked, I'm... Uh, I'll deal with it then. Anyway. Okay. And if you are wondering where this pattern is, the pattern is drafted by you after buying this. Go to Miss, mm, sorry. Go to Mrs. Depew, Vintage Reproduction. She is fabulous. She has all the cool stuff. I mean, when I say she has all the cool stuff, her thing is to take old patterns and preserve them digitally and then she sells them so that we that is amazing because if there's only one pattern out there left of something from the 1800s and then she digitizes it and makes it available to all of us that is so cool 
That is so cool. I mean, I love, that is what technology is for, people. Preserve stuff and then make sure that we can buy it all over again. And then this stuff, this is just printed off by me. I can write on this. I don't feel guilty for destroying a one-of-the-kind pattern. I don't want to do that. Okay. All right. Sewing time. All right, move this. this okay if I remember correctly I did it up and down this direction sure I can do that again but I'm gonna cut off this this little draggy point I need to remember to drink more water today during this. I think I got myself dehydrated yesterday, which was very, very strange. I, however, am not gonna trim this part off, and I'm, at, I'm gonna actually try to uh, keep that, because if I could have a long strip of this, this would be a lovely scarf. This would be, a, or a little, you know, decorative thing. So I'm gonna try to keep that intact. Like a little neck thing where you just go flouncing. All right, like I said yesterday, what I'm doing right now is the most tedious part of everything when it comes to sewing. You're talking about having to lay out fabric and fabric does not like to lay out nicely in general, but certain fabrics are uh, more cranky than others and more finicky and chiffon is it. I don't think that I have ever been able to lay chiffon out uh, the same way twice where I would end up with um, it flat and lining up because it is entirely too easy to do this a wave thing now i do have to say if you can get a chiffon with sh uh, with stripes you have a really a, a much better shot at being able to see exactly what's going on so i highly suggest striped chiffon in general because it makes it a lot easier to know to, to really confidently know that things are on the grain because whichever way you uh, cut things, it does affect how it lays on the body or hangs on the body. I, I, I my nose is, I, I need to sneeze. Give me a second. Oh my goodness. Oh, allergies are strong with me. Okay. I'm going to not actually pull that down. I'm going to pull this up. I use the grid on my table to try to figure it to, to try to go, okay, and there's the fold and we're not doing the wave and you spend a lot less time at the sewing machine. Than you, than you realize when you first start sewing. More of it is spent staring at things, stitch ripping, and um, laying out patterns and material and trying to get everything to fit. Okay, that actually looks good. I think I'm getting better at this. Ooh, I even eyeballed that fairly well. the other direction. Ah, ha, ha. All right, this is the front. As always, I do not include seam allowances on any of my patterns. All seam allowances are determined when, during cutout. Okay. 
quilting clips are the best thing on earth. What is the brand of the pattern? Haslam system of dra drafting. Okay, dress cutting. Came out in the uh, oh, 1920s, and the idea was sew it at home instructions. You go from the first uh, booklet um, being almost just uh, pictures. No, no uh, it, it's of a general shape or form, and there weren't measurements. And the pictures are about this big, so they look like doll clothes. And then you have a general idea of uh, fit, and you do it yourself. Now, as time went on, uh, the patterns would get more information, more sizing, and in the end would be a, let me grab this. A sloper and it's the best way that I can say this is that this is me my front and my back flat and if I cut this out and sewed this this would be um, a sheath dress with no real wiggle room and it would fit me perfectly this is the most valuable item in my sewing collection that I have. Now, please note that this is drafted for 1920s clothing. This obviously does not incorporate the very obvious waist that I, in fact, do have. But the 1920s doesn't use the waist. So if I was going to do, let's say, 1940s clothing or 1950s, I would not use this. This is an inappropriate sloper for that time period. And I would end up redrafting this to look more like this. It's downstairs and almost inaccessible. I haven't been working on that very much. Okay, but it has a defined waist. Darting for the waist darts here and here that are used for those time periods. Then you take a look at the drawing going, I want to make that dress. And it tells you from you, like you here, you're going to take this part and go out two inches. You're going to drop this. You're going to pull this out. This, and nothing can go in because if it goes in, it's not going to uh, fit you. It will be inside of you because this is the minimum line that I can do to fit me and this is the perfect armhole oh and these this, these this armhole is drafted for no sleeves my next project will be figuring out how to draft sleeves mwah. i want mwah, fitting that's the idea here that's the entire point of this that i want to be able to really wear the clothing that i'm wearing and that it seriously fits me and to do that it's drafting and the thing is is that i have done enough um bust adjustments waist adjustments and everything else with commercial patterns and they piss me off. They make me so cussing angry that I, I just don't wanna deal with them anymore. It is easier for me to have learned how to do this, to put it on a piece of paper and draw around it of exactly what I want and then this happens. And because of what I've done with like the house dresses up to this point, I'm now looking at these pictures and going, I'm going to take this and now I'm going to draw it. So if you want to know how I drew that and what it was that I did to change into this, because when I say, no really, this pattern is from this picture. There isn't one. You draft it and you create it. I really do mean it. So this, is, this isn't a skill I had two years ago, just to let you know. So th this is a grown skill and I'm getting better at it as I go, which is really exciting. Okay. Now that I've had my monologue, I'm going to get off of my monologue. I highly suggest the Haslam system, though. Okay. And here. There. Okay. So, quilting clips. When you have a chiffon that likes to move on you, it's really awesome to clip the edges together so that it doesn't move and that you know that you are in fact on the edge and that you are 
on the grain that you want to be. If I end up with a little extra material down here, I'm not entirely upset about that because this is my walking room and that's not something that needs to be fitted here. All right, so yesterday, the name of the game was one inch seam allowance and now I'm looking for my ruler. Look at this, I even cleaned up last night, go me. All right, if I remember correctly, I gave myself two extra inches at the top on principle alone. And I will do that again. I'm cutting out the armpit first and then giving myself a full inch of seam allowance to give myself plenty of room to uh, fudge everything in. I am not do cutting this in a perfect um, cutout on the first time around. I'm actually do giving myself cut marks to then use as basically connect the dots. And then once those are done, I connect the cuts into a one inch seam allowance. And I mile, oh, 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 no, no, I just press stuff and I don't want to press stuff. Okay, there we go. Oh, come on. I need to sharpen some scissors. Okay. I am holding this firmly down as I peel this away because I do not assume that the silk uh, cooperated. You need to remember that even if it's chiffon, the second that you're dealing with silk, if your scissors are even, or, or blade are even remotely not brand spanking new, it may not cut it. it, it silk is incredibly interesting as a, 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 a strength thing. Okay, one inch. Holding the pattern and the fabric very firmly in place as I move the ruler, because the rulers like to catch things and then pull. And the last thing that I want to be pulling right now is a chiffon that likes to not go back to where it was going to go. This isn't like a, a cotton quilting thing. I'm pretty sure that I have one spot on my my blade that I hit the ruler in because yeah that's what it looks like all right take that clip off so I can get the ruler in there There we go. And connect the dots. There we go. There we go. I have now cut this pattern out three times <laughs> out of this material. And this will be the last one, thankfully. I will keep this clip to the pattern so that I make sure that I, in fact, cut out the back. But first, I need to do something I don't like doing. I need to pull. Again, this is the bottom part. This is also the lining. Thankfully, I'm less worried about this. I just need, actually, I think I might do this separately. I am really breaking some rules here. Okay, actually, I have a better idea. I am aware that I could do a better job with all of this if I had a, uh, a much better, bigger 
cutting table. I'm very aware of that. I'm also very aware of how limited my space is. So use what you got. All right. I'm going to show you this. In no way, shape, or form am I, you know, like an expert on anything. And I think a lot of this is probably what other people have experienced and do. All right, obviously this part was off the cutting mat. I would not do this with a fitted skirt, something that was actually going to show. This is under and in. Okay, so I'm actually just going to line up this ruler after lining up these stripes just a little bit better because I can use the stripes to my advantage. And I'm going to put this ruler down to Line it up, more or less, slightly angled it out. There's nothing wrong with having a little bit more walking space and call it good. All right, and then on the other side, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Line this up a little bit. <laughs> it's labeled made in France with this uh, gold, uh, gold stamp. I like the gold stamp, that's actually pretty, which is weird to say about a label. Speaking of labels, I still need to order some labels for all the clothing that I'm making. I think it would be hysterical. Still, I, I still need to have something funny, though, or, or clever or seriously egotistical. I know that sounds funny, but every once in a while, it's just good to have like an ego-boosting move, especially one that doesn't really affect anyone else other than you. Those are absolutely fantastic ego boosts. Okay. This is the front. I am now putting this on the front pattern. I am laying this back out. I am pulling this back out. Now let's cut out the back. Ended up buying this material on sale at, um, let me think, Fabric Mart. Love that place. They always have good sales. All right, and this. I'm getting better with laying out chiffon. That's very exciting. How strange. There we go. Nice and flat. Don't do that. Don't move things around. It's a little too far out. That will be a weird neck. No weird necks. That's not the point of all of this. There we go. Am I still lined up? 
sure. I am clumsy today. I'm having a interesting day. This isn't a good, this is a, ah, okay. Siobhan is just, Siobhan's an experience. There we go. Okay, there's the lines. Again, uh, if I'm working with chiffon, I, I prefer to have stripes. Prefer. Yep. Because if this if this didn't have striping, I'm not sure that I'd recognize like how that was completely straight and this part was going off at an angle. two inches out for here. Armpit, really squaring that out. Really holding that tight. Do not move. That wonko, that wibble just a little more than I liked. Okay. And then we're just gonna do, and this one is so much straighter through here. a mark and then curve curve connect the dots hold down peel beautiful I do not actually use my mannequin. My mannequin is uh, not proportional for me, and I have been unable to get any, and I mean any, of my 1920s dresses over the shoulders of the mannequin. And I think that, well, it, it, my, my armpits are ginormously huge, but I don't think that my shoulders match that at all, and I cannot reduce that down. I started thinking about making a mannequin, and there, there, there's a lot of challenge there of a high probability of inaccuracy. What I really want is one of those uh, 3D created mannequins 
that um, you, you go into the photo booth and get a 360 photo of you. Yeah, I know that's high tech. Yeah, I know I could use spray foam, but you know what I really like? Precision, everything. I would totally do that in a heartbeat. I think that'd be the coolest thing on earth. Because I think that would be like the actual help that would help me. However, I do like the mannequin. If I can get everything on, the, the thing that I have found the most useful for the mannequin is uh, the hem. Because I can't quite figure out how to do that on myself wearing the dress. So if you ever see a wonky hem on me, that's why. Okay, let's do that thing that I hate doing, which is this. Yep, and there's nothing that I can do about that. Okay, let's do the exact same thing that I did on the other side. Oh, this, this fabric is a joke. <laughs> but as I said, if you're gonna work with chiffon, I highly suggest make it stripey. That's what really helps. All right, this is the back, let's move this. But again, this one is for a lining, it is on the inside. This does not need to be precise work, and this isn't where I should put my energy. I wanna put more of my focus and energy on creating the neckline and the armpits than I want on the inside of the dress that no one except for y'all are gonna see. So, and even then, you're not even getting to see what I'm seeing because I cannot figure out how to get the camera angles that my eyes have because again as i've said camera work is in and of itself is an art form so i've ended up in this weird uh, weird position where at the exact same time i'm trying to teach myself uh all of these sewing skills because let me make this very clear i don't know what i'm doing and i'm not an expert in any shape or th of the form yes my skills are growing but i i i'm not this isn't what I started with in my life. I'm a political science major and I was a science teacher, a middle school science teacher. I've never taken a sewing class. Everything that I've learned has been online. I have learned through visual and through books. And so whatever it is I'm doing, if you have a better way or you're thinking that's nuts, I learned this from this awesome teacher, you are correct. Yes, I agree. I totally agree. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna come back here. <laughs> Let's try the camera. <laughs> you would get such a felt wonky. <laughs> It'd be like me coming down the hill, um, like those BMX riders on mountains. It'd be terrifying. Plus, I because I think I move my I move around so much. You guys would be you gotta be dizzy if I did that. All right. That lined up just fine. Okay, as of right now, this is the sum total that is left. And I am very excited. We are now almost back to where I was, thought I was last night. This is the back, the front is over there. Let's put it together. Pit to armpit and I showed this yesterday and I'll show it again today when you're drafting your patterns you have the ability to be clever and a clever human ensures that all points that are gonna get let's see if I can get this without the weird backlighting again I, I don't have the best lighting but this is the best point in the house and the only place in the house that I can do this 
Do you see how this is a right angle on both of those layers? This makes it so much easier to start the sewing machine and to have everything join. And you can imagine when you open this, you don't have a weird this or a hmm or things that match like this, which is deeply inconvenient when trying to make something look high end. Sewing machine, let's do this. Okay, so now I'm sewing. This is a great time for you to get yourself any self-care items such as water or a bathroom because sewing is sewing and it takes a little bit. And I can't talk over the machine. But I won't be here long because it's four lines that I'm doing. And yeah, I am in fact not pinning this. There's no bother for that. I just have to line up the armpits. That's all I have to do. And this will work just fine. So yeah, take your time when you line something up and match it. If you do it right, because you drafted it, you have a very, very high likelihood of extremely precise work. Thank you. 
<laughs> that would be the funniest thing ever. I get a GoPro for sewing. That'd be hysterical. <gasps> the last time I was looking at getting a GoPro, I was doing Spartan races and thinking about getting one for when I was running down hills. <laughs> All right, I am trimming off so that I can easily iron this open, flip it around, iron it flat, and then do another seam. I adore French seams. French seams are smart, they're clever. It, it, it's, it just works. It works so well. Especially when it comes to thin, fine materials and it's not a high level skill because we're, we're, we're talking about sew it, trim, iron, sew and then all of a sudden you have this beautiful edge in the inside that also does not itch and for someone with sensory issues that's a really big deal. So yeah, I, I like it when my clothing doesn't itch and that you have like a soft, a soft interior seam. That is absolutely lovely. Plus, it's time travel appropriate. All right, I need an iron and an ironing board. And to definitely not unplug this computer. Oh my goodness. Ugh. This seems to drain the power on my computer faster than anything I've ever seen before. Checking the temp, because I am dealing with confirmed silk. I have absolutely no water in there. I apologize. I need to get water. Give me a second. Oh, and regarding my like title of this uh, entire broadcast and everything else, I am absolutely past the 24 hour mark that I started this dress yesterday. However, I can confirm that yesterday I spent a total, and I mean total, of six hours on this dress. I'm in, and, and I'm a mom, and I got interrupted, and you know, stuff. So, it is what it is. Not all challenges turn out the way you think they're going to. And yeah, I will, I'm going to trim that. We, I mean, there was no part of that that looked like I had a plan for the, uh, the hem. A lot of the sewing that I'm doing today is the, please just get it done in the most efficient way possible that's not gonna look terrible and homemade. Oh, that looks nice. Okay. One. And then do this side. Remember that you want your seams as straight as possible because however you iron it and then you sew it, that really is how it's going to hang. It's not going to do anything else. There we go. All right. 
lose this folding? Do I need to iron it or can I just take it to the machine? I can, I can take this to the machine. Always sew from the same spot, mirror image. I am choosing to start with the armpit every single time. So I start up at the armpit on this side, I will start on the armpit on the other side. If I chose to do the armpit on one side, put the hem up and you know, on the other, things will not necessarily hang similarly. Always do a mirror image thing. And the sides will be done. Then we'll do the hem and then the armpit and neck. This is insanely close to done. Very, very close. Took a little bit more diligence and we got this. And this really will be the fastest I have ever sewn something in my life. It's a little crazy. material so I do this once and I do it right or else Good, 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 good. I have not been using a serger 
recently. I have been doing exclusively French seams on all on the last uh, four dresses, which is wild. Um, I, I, I remember having a video early on uh, in, in, in this uh, where I said you will pry my, my serger from my cold, dead hands. Um, I don't care if it's historically accurate or not. And that's the funny part because I'm like, now I'm like, yeah, actually, actually, if I can, if I can, if I can French seam it, I'm French seaming it. Uh, and that started because of what I'm about to do. If I do not have sleeves on something, I want a lining, mainly because I hate dealing with this kind of edging and trying to close it up and trying to, because it never lays nicely for me. It's probably a, a sewing skill thing. But when it comes to this kind of material, I hate running this kind of material through a serger. My serger will eat it up. My serger is a little, you know, it, it probably needs a, some, some TLC. Anyway, but at that point, it's like, I think I'd rather just do this. So, yeah. And then there's been a couple of instances where it's like, I'm not good enough with the serger to be able to do that weird curve or that weird edge. And there have been times where I've ended up with raw edges where I didn't want them to be raw edges. And so, not recently. Take care of the bottom of this first. I'm going to take lace because I have a ton of it and I'm going to sew it on the ground the bottom and finish the edge of this. Where's my lace? Oh, I bet I put it in the closet. Give me a second. is found it found it found it found it this one yeah when I say I've got plenty of lace boxes I have boxes of this this is amazing
I want to see if I can show this up close on the camera exactly what I'm doing. Ooh, I don't think that I can. Okay, I'm going to try to bring this forward. Maybe a little more. Ooh, I could get this. Okay, camera's going to be real funky here for a second, but I'm going to try to show you exactly what I'm doing, but I'm connected to the wall by my computer because, again, this is only the second time that I've actually done this, so I don't exactly have a good setup for being live yet. This is, this is different from things that I have done in the past. Okay, ooh, I think I might have done that, though. We have shoes in the way, though. We need a water bottle. Let's go down. Hey, look at that. Okay, I'm gonna put this over here, put this over my shoulder. Okay, this is what I'm doing. Okay, the camera's is coming around here. So this is over here. I'm placing it in the middle. And lace is amazing because it, it'll fold. So I'm using a decorative edge to bind the raw edge so that it looks pretty and it's not going to unravel. It's also slightly weighted because, again, chiffon is a little uh, light and it'll creep up on you as you're wearing it. This is a better camera angle, isn't it? It is. I can already tell. You don't even have to answer that. I know. See? Okay. Let's try to plan how that's going to go. These are definitely not even, but that doesn't matter because I can do that. All that matters is that it's done. Gun because it's small. I almost like this camera, ang but camera angle better than anything I have ever ended up with before. I feel like you can actually see what I'm doing. I might just leave this here and try to show you how I'm going to do the next part. Okay. All right, you see how I'm folding this over? And since this is not a lace that's going to unravel in the least, I'm just going to try to line it up with the rolls in the top. So that's the bottom. Now, let's put this 
this in the inside this direction. I can now put this right here, move some stuff. All right. Here we go. This is the exciting part. All right, this is the front. This is the back. And then this is the back. And that's the back. Starting with the back neck, just because. Might add, I am going to put the chiffon on the top because I don't need the feed dogs pulling on the chiffon like that. I want that on the more stable material. And I can also keep an eye on where the chiffon is moving and also can see that I need to move this up in general to make sure that the back neck is hitting appropriately. And I know that that went out too far, so that's not gonna be something that I, I can compensate for that now. Okay, this half, laying everything as flat as possible is a great idea. I'm not continuing to sew until I pull everything to the point where it lays and doesn't pull back. And this is okay that it's overlapping. Again, I'm not surprised. Chiffon moves when you, when you cut it. First seam in the back, and now I'm going to go directly over to here. I see this did not, and that's okay because I ended up having a cut here that I, I wanted to avoid. So I'm actually going to, if I did a full half inch, I'm going to this is just, I'm finagling just a little bit, and I'm gonna remember that on the other end. Please note that I am not pulling on this because I need to make sure, because that will affect the other side. So now I'm trying to lay the back bodice as flat as possible, and I can see where it comes in back together. So I'm pinching this, and I'm gonna hold that there all the way through. Except for when I need to do this. Yeah. Sometimes it does get caught in my two big things. Catch it. Let's see if we have 
much. Now, if I, if I had been really awesome and on it, I would have actually taken and matched up the, uh, the seams right here and sewn from the, oh wow, that, uh, never mind, I am amazing. I am glorious, actually, oh my gosh, that, that lines up beautiful. Never mind, I'm amazing. But the correct way was to, to line up the middle seam and sew out from that and then return and then sew out from that again. That, that, that's the better way to do it. Now, if you all hear any uh, noise in the background, that's because my husband is home and he's actually actively taking care of me to make sure that I am fed right now and he's making shakes. So you're gonna hear some noise in the background and whenever you see hear noise, don't be annoyed. Just go, aw, someone's taking care of Nora. Get the other. And I'm going to start from the back just like I did on the other one. Notice I'm leaving this open. That's the trick to all of this. Leave that part open. All right, let's get the front. The front I'm expecting to be wonky. It's okay. Or actually, I mean, just a little wonky. Start with the shoulder because I need that to lay flat. Yes, we know there are some issues. No, I'm not worried. Yes, we can trim things. Remember, I gave myself a full inch of seam allowance. can see that it's laying flat, that the stripes are in fact horizontal. Now, the only thing is, is coming over here and making sure that the shoulders match. 
and we're going to expect that the back front shoulder, the back shoulder and the front shoulder do not in fact match up anymore because this definitely is a change. Okay, we're going to pin this part right here. I'm, oh, I have a shake at me. Okay, give me a second. Hi. Okay, just like yesterday, I'm going to take a 10 minute break. I will be back in 10 minutes, but I am going to feed myself because I am a smart human who does self-care. Okay, I'll be back. And maybe this will work this time. Maybe he'll stay there.
You were totally right. I never put it on, on the sound, which means everything I just said was totally just, yeah, that's exactly why I worry. That is exactly it. What I was saying, yeah, I, uh, I just had my lunch. I just heard. She's the kind of individual that you want to be able to sit down with because of such a unique human experience that she had. She did not have the same kind of perceptions or interactions or mandates put upon her as pretty much everyone else does. She had a completely unique existence. And for and I'm fascinated by unique experience and uses and, and perspectives. And if nothing else. For someone like me who sews, oh, her wardrobe, wow, it was amazing. It was, it was so beautiful. But anyway, yeah, and now we're sewing. And, and thank you, Jim, for saying something because, oh my goodness, yeah. All right, here we go, pull that out, move the lace. Move. All right, we are aiming for French seaming here. We're going to make these edges nice and clean so that they flip around nicely. Make sure I'm not doing anything underneath it. Just what I want to cut and no more. This needs to be a very clean edge because it's going to be the thing that everyone looks at. So we need to cut this nice and close. And again, I do not want any mistakes right now. No cutting double ed ed layers. I'm a little worried that I'm distracted because I'm basically a nonstop monologue right now explaining what I'm doing. <laughs> I am sure that I can get used to that. Okay, here we go. Over that. I'm going to cut that a little bit closer because this armpit area ends up with a lot of material and you can end up with a lot of bunching that doesn't look very nice and it's finicky to sew at that point and I don't like having to do be finicky right there. So yes, I'm, I am cutting this awfully close to that seam line. <clears throat> but yes, that looks good. To the other side and again there's threads everywhere but that's something I worry about at the end time right through that one little area. Okay, good. Okay, let's do neckline. I think I need to turn on some lights. Give me a second. This is uh, there. Just realized I couldn't. Yeah, the lighting changed. I think we had a cloud go over the sky or something.
Okay. Now let's do the neck. Front neck. I want to eyeball this one just a little bit more because this is the one that changed things a little bit. Sure, I'm good with this. However, I can see it a lot easier if I flip it over. That's not it. Inside the dress. Aha. All right. Pull the dress inside out. <clears throat> then pull all the way in. And then pull it all the way through. Now our dress is inside out. Almost. This arm, shoulder, and this shoulder. Let's get out the iron. When it comes to this kind of ironing, start with the area that's going to pucker the most. So all of your sharp curves. my iron likes to die when it's not in use and we're gonna re-trigger things to get it to go back up okay no not yet okay need some warm up getting myself a warm Now it's going. Okay, hitting this with the iron.
Ooh, now, okay. I love it when you hit that rhythm for whatever it is you're doing. Oh, look at how nice that is. That's what I'm talking about. And if you can get it to iron that way, and then you sew that down, because what I'm gonna do is do that little seam there. And of course, this is the uh, inside of the dress. So we're gonna end up with a bound French seam for every single last bit of this. And if necessary, to make it lay as nicely as we can see it now, I will top stitch this if needed. We'll see what happens when we are done with this. I do love a nice top stitch. Okay, I'm going to actually start with this and then work my way back around. There. Sometimes just sort of pressing and rolling the material can really help. What a surprise, the iron is hot. Oh, this is gonna make you feel really clever. I love this part. But you have to leave something open for you to be able to flip this inside and out and to have a lining like this on the inside. I have played origami in my head one too many times in my head at night, which has kept me from sleeping. And like, uh, I can't come up with another way to do this that doesn't end up making it so you can't turn it the other way. So the easiest way seems to be from the shoulders. From the best that I can tell, I've, I've done enough sewing online tutorials and books. I do believe that this is the standard way to do this. I think, I'm not even sure if there's another way if you're French seaming a, a, you know, you're lining in. Cause I really cannot like, if, if, it, if there is, it's uh, it definitely not occurred to me. Oh, it's behaving so well. Gosh, I really like this material um, combo. It has not been difficult. I mean, maybe it's been surprising, but it hasn't been like, ah, this is horrible. What is this? So I've, I've had those projects where it's like, this is the most terrible thing I've ever had to work with. Okay, let's get that armpit nice and flat, which means that I actually want to Pull the inside of the chiffon down and make sure there's no buckling or wrinkling at the top part. And if you're thinking I should get out my ham and to put it underneath the curve, you're completely correct. But is it going to happen? Probably not right now. Mainly because I'm actually seeing this work. If, I, if this wasn't working, I would absolutely get out a different tool to make sure that it did work. I mean, the way that's laying is just absolutely fantastic. I'm feeling very pleased with how that looks. I think I did a better job of cutting out the the inside, uh, the, the trimming the uh, edges. I think that's a huge part of of how to make sure that a curve is going to be okay. And again, th this is a 3D concept right now that we're dealing with. So this isn't a flat thing. Which is part of the reason why this is so wow when it works. This is going to have more of a boat neck than I was planning. That's okay. I like boat necks on me.
Actually, I like boat necks quite a lot. They're very, I think they're very flattering on me. We all have the neckline that we like the best. Which is why we have so many different necklines. Yes, 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 yes. Good, good. Oh, that's so nice. This fabric just irons so well, too. I really like this. I haven't really dealt with anything like that before, so this is very fun. Remember how I said that, no, really, you, you spend less time at the sewing machine than you do at the cutting or ironing board. So that's where you're going to spend the most amount of your time if you, if you start sewing. Okay, that's not going to go flat, but that's okay. All right, there. And there. This. Oh my God. I would not have the patience to do this. I actually, you're going to laugh on this one. What I do have the patience for and what I don't have the patience for. That has changed over the years. And a lot of it has been changing my expectations of what it is that you actually have to do to, to do the thing that you're doing. Patience is such an interesting concept though because there's so many projects that I've watched where I'm like, I don't want to do that. That's not my interest and therefore I would not have the patience for this. And that is very real. Okay, that's the part that didn't get done. Fantastic, let's finish that out. Um, and I have realized that I have far more patience for certain activities that um, other people don't, but then I've watched them do other things where I'm just like, wow, uh, no, I would never want to, uh, I don't have the patience for that. So I find it very interesting what we do have aptitudes for patience for. That, that's just fascinating to me. But I have found that I think that I might actually be a more patient person but than, 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 than many. I, I really like big picture concepts. I, I don't mind long-term plans. I like long-term plans, actually. They, they provide a very nice guidance for, you know, like a theme for a year or something. I just want to hit that one more time because it's going to be really important. Okay, now, because I had the patience to iron all of those flags, this sewing is about to go much, much faster, and it's about to look a whole lot better. Okay, I'm going to move this gently over here and just lay it down right there. And then I think what I did was pull, let me see if I can do this again. Oop, I just pulled that right out of the plug. That's not good. This has got to stay plugged in. Like, really has to stay plugged in. There. And let's go back to here. Okay, this is the fiddly sewing that, if I get this right, I'm going to be very excited. Okay, this is the dead center of I don't think that I'm going to be able to change that. Oh, actually, you know, you know what? No, 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 no. That's not a top stitch. Okay, so I am now, I'm going to sew it here. I'm going to eyeball where I want to do that. And I can feel that the edge of that is right there. So this will encompass everything. Actually, I might do it on the line. Okay, I see exactly where I'm at. I'm starting in the middle and I'm going to go up and I'm going to come back here and I'm going to go that direction. And then I'm going to do, try to do the same all the way through. Let's do this.
this case. I'm going to flip this around. That will be just fine. Flip these threads. Two to hold straight. Three, nice and flat. Put that right there. Just drop it. Okay, if you have the chiffon on the top, you can tell whether or not you're actually encompassing everything. This is actually pretty nice. 